Hey, how's it going? Nat here. Let's take a look at what's been making news. Young people around the world have taken to the streets or the internet to call for action on climate change. Here's Charlotte with more. From the Philippines to Uganda and even the middle of the Arctic Ocean, kids all over the world have been speaking up about an issue they're pretty passionate about. Climate change is such an important thing and people don't understand that if we ruin the planet now, there won't be a planet for the future. We're kind of the ones growing up in this, so we're trying to fix it, basically. The Global Day for Climate Action is part of a movement that's been going on for a couple of years now, inspired by Swedish activist Greta Thunberg. This year, because of COVID, the marches look a bit different. If you stretch both of your arms out and spin around in a circle, you should not be able to touch the person next to you. Here in Australia, protesters focused on asking our government to support renewable energy sources rather than gas. Here in Australia, we have the perfect conditions for renewables. Of course, not everybody believes that protesting is the best way to get things done, especially in the middle of a pandemic. But these guys say it's not a time to forget about the environment. We've got all the technology to change, so we need our leaders to step up and change for the world to be a better place. Sir David Attenborough has joined Instagram to spread his environmental message. My name is David Attenborough and I've been appearing on radio and television for the past 60 years. But this is my first time on Instagram. Attenborough is probably the world's most famous natural historian. And while social media probably isn't his natural habitat, the 94-year-old wants to use it to make people more aware of the problems Earth is facing. And if 2020 has left you feeling a bit like this, well, good news. It's one of 217 new emoji that have been approved by the Unicode Consortium, the organisation that decides on these sorts of things. But you won't be able to use them until next year, which could make you feel a bit like this. People all over the world have paid tribute to Aussie cricket legend Dean Jones. Here's Kale with sport. He was one of Australia's greatest batsmen who revolutionised one day cricket. So he's hit that and it's going straight down the ground. Will it be over? It's six. Dean Jones died last night of a heart attack at the age of 59. But his flashy batting and quirky character will be remembered for years to come. Dean Jones here, how are you, sir? He was so passionate about Australian cricket. He was so passionate about the game of cricket, full stop. Jones played 52 tests and 164 one days for Australia, tallying nearly 10,000 runs, including his maiden ton, battling 40 degree heat in India that will go down in cricket folklore. Now, this probably wasn't the send-off Darius Boyd was looking for at the end of his 337-game career. The Brisbane Broncos star couldn't help his team avoid their first ever wooden spoon, despite his best efforts. And he's going to help himself to a try in his final game. After the loss, Darius celebrated his career with a gender reveal. Ah, oh, he's having a little girl. Now, Charlotte Kaslick is the NRLW's biggest ever signing. It's just she's never played a game of rugby league. So I'm just not getting ahead of myself, just trying to get my first game out of the way first. <laughs> and then we'll see. Kaslick is one of the world's best rugby sevens player and an Olympic gold medalist. But now she's switched codes. Obviously a lot to learn, but uh, the skills and all of that are uh, pretty much the same. The tackling's probably going to be like the main difference. She'll be lining up for the Sydney Roosters in the upcoming NRLW season. All I need for this next segment are a few tools, a little instruction and a vision in my mind. It's time for the joys of painting and other art. The biggest art news in Australia today was the Archibald Prize. You know, the very famous portrait competition. And this is the winner. It's of AFL legend Adam Goods, and it's by Vincent Namajira, who happens to be the great-grandson of one of Australia's most famous landscape artists, Albert Namajira. He's the first Indigenous person to win the Archibald in its 99-year history. If portraits aren't your thing, how about a big old giraffe head coming out of your wall? Now that's art. It's in an office in London that's gone all out with the creative decorating. We've got a train set that kind of goes around the table, which is quite cool. We've got a Lego room, got a hot air balloon. And I've got to say, that train room definitely does something for me. 
What doesn't do it for me though is this ramen themed mask by an artist in Japan. Not because it doesn't look cool, I think it does, but according to him, it's not actually very usable. To keep its shape, he's filled it with cotton balls, which are kind of hard to breathe through. Although when his glasses fog up, it kind of looks like steam from the noodles. I'll call that a happy little accident. That's all from us this week. See you again on Monday. Have a great weekend.